and I'm doing that right now when I'm with this game that I'm working on. And like I get, I get these points, and um, from the from the right I'm develop, I'm developer right who's telling the story, I get is um, so let's talk about yeah so game de game development right so so, the, so it's, I mean it's been a, I've been working of um, kind of like on um, basis um, with the person who's you know is developing a game his own independent game on Patreon and so. You know, I decided to volunteer, and I looked because I thought right at the start this could be something that's worthwhile. And so, is um, it his uh, game, and you're helping with the writing? Yeah, so I'm co-writing it, right? Cool. So, like last last week was a really hard week, uh, and the week before, basically, I think it was last week or the week before of writing. Three days of just boom writing. So I write Wait, about. Did he present 40, the concept? Nineteen thousand words yeah it was his it's his story he just gets me the points and i'll write the points down and, and then I, you do I, your I, take I, on it yeah he, he does the outline for what's going to happen he'll go like you know because i had to actually go back and tell him how to do it backwards as well because oh. most so like if you're like the thing if you're a new writer a new um like if you have a story doesn't mean that you know how to write this tell the story right because unless you've been taught how to do it and not everybody has been taught how to do it. So I I latched onto this guy because I thought there was something that was worthy of being told with my with my help. So you thought your better. mentorism was would, was valuable for him and also good for you, you know, teamwork. So you made yeah, something good to together. Learn how it works. Yeah. Right. How game development mm -hmm. works. That's the whole reason. Was it like it was like okay, if I can work with this mentor room, at first I was just going to edit, and then it was like. We could. Uh, then he brought me on as to co-write, and then it's now, better bouncing the ball between each other of the you know how to improve it. I imagine if he was open for it, that's 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 what it came down to. Often a better I, system. I because I was coming on board as an editor, I was like, what would I will not want somebody to do with me, right? Mm -hmm. Or what would I want someone to do Take with over. me <laughs> as a writer? Yeah. So role reversals. Like I don't want somebody telling me how to write my story without showing me how. It's or why good, without better. showing or why <laughs> yeah and why this needs to happen here and why that needs to happen there because you know because i mean the last release so was how much of it did you change have you have you had a big never, change that you implemented where you I said never, this point's not good but the rest of it's no, good if you took that I out it's better you don't done I that change plots. i don't change plots it's not my place there to change a story so as an editor my place is there for um to come Just in and how say you get through it how to get through this what words you can use how to use conversations how to use dialogue why dialogues use and then he basically got me by saying this is the blood um this is the bones of it now put some flesh on it and then i started putting meat on it and skin and the hair you so on you know it's building this so how would up. you summarize the story as like you being introduced to us and like what's the concept it's a horror a horror yeah, it's about uh, it's a it's a horror story, uh, ghost horror story uh, um, about corruption and a, a family and corruption. So you know, it was quite interesting. So I, I was like, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I've been playing these games. I don't know how these games work. I'd like to learn. I'd like to be able to say I know how this works, dude. You know, when so I go you're watching the programming ex bits of it as well. You're, you're being part I'm of that. I'm looking at the coding. I'm writing the coding. I'm writing the text forms. I'm using Adam. What's he? What's he using it? Using it to program. Rampy. It's Ramping. A ramp, rampy, and he's doing three D three D dares. Is it three D dares or whatever? Oh, I, I haven't heard of Rampy. What? How do you spell it? Dares oh, no, three D. Uh, R E N P Y. Uh, oh, I, I haven't oh, heard yeah. that one. Oh, yeah, visual yeah. novel. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. So it's. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, so, it, looks, uh, it, it looks quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, the setup's really cool. I mean, so he's. Got I mean, a, it's, um, it's very much art driven, art narrative driven. So I mean, it's, it doesn't tell you much about the engine, but if it's easy to use, that's right. probably a, a good thing. Well, you can. I mean, it's a it's a game. It's a game, right? So you can use uh, stuff like a uh, uh, role playing game maker, RPNG, whatever they call it. Um, you can use you can use Unity. 
Um, I've seen all these other ones that use that. So you can mm. go from basically having comic strips, right, to actually having 3D animation. And it's all depends on the, on the uh, what is it called, the skill of the person, of the developer, right? The one who's done mm. the story, who's doing the artwork for it. So I don't have to do that. Um, but he, then there, who does well, often, it? Coding? I mean, like if it's a good, if it's a good system, um, then it, yeah, that, presumably if you're an artist and writer mainly, like it probably does a lot of the work. It's probably designed to be really intuitive for that. Yeah. So it's, it looks, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's it's pretty e easy thing to. I mean, not pretty easy. It's I mean, it, the way when I look at it, it's designed for what you're trying up. to do. Yeah, and I've yeah. learned how to like how codes work, simplicity. Not I not too much. I haven't learned enough, but I've just learned enough how to. Is it like the flow chart of the conversation and what? Yeah, how the codes yeah. work. Yeah, mm. I mean, I wouldn't know how to code it, but I mean, but that's what you know. It's all there for, but somebody else would do, but. And then also there's like where you know you can use music, you can use uh, voiceovers. I mean, there's so much things you can do with this stuff. And uh, and then there's animation side of things, right? Uh, you can animate these um, these um, there's three D images, you know, that you've created. You know, just, just what is it called? Uh, where you like frames per second, right? So there's like twelve yeah. frames per second, and you end up like you know if you're using cartoons or animations. But then if you go into CGI, yeah, CGI if you're doing 60 frames. So there's some really fantastic things that I've seen people do with these games that they've worked on. Themselves. Oh, yeah. Like, well, I mean, they're telling their story, and yeah. then you can access it and experience it. So it's a good thing to be able to get that finished in whatever regard. And, and I'm, you know, I'm an advocate of, um, you know, of, of people doing their thing. I think uh, independent creators should be able to make a living off it. And I think, uh, you know, but I, I mean, there are those people who, who take people for rides, you know, game people, you know, they get their money and then they don't deliver on time or they delay and delay. And I've seen people who don't, haven't done any, a work for a year, right? But they still get their monthly, monthly you know, thousands on freaking um, of people supporting them, whatever, every month. And I'm like, you're just taking people for a ride and those people just, are waiting, waiting, and they, and the guys basically decide, yeah, I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna juice this out because as soon as I finish the game, right, the money's gonna stop, and that I think those people, those kinds of people, don't have any other ideas for the next thing, and I think they just got the one thing and they're trying to make more. But there are these really talented. If they, if they don't finish it, then they probably don't even have the one thing. <laughs> they've got, they've got half of a thing. <laughs> yeah. And that's and I, and I feel sorry for people who actually support those guys that don't support people who actually deliver every month. Well, I guess I everyone's got every a choice, haven't they? Depending. Yeah, and I think it's it's um, it's it's ingenious to, for people to do that, but I also think it actually um, lets the actual creators who actually work hard down financially because it means like these guys are really working themselves, and if you if you're a later month, people take their money away. All right that month or they come back and they put get that you know uh because the way patreon works is they get paid out monthly so you could basically mm -hmm. cancel your halfway through the month after it's been released or something like that you know it's kind of weird and i'm not sure if they can um how they work it try to well, cheat i guess something. half the problem with or the challenge with patreon is like you've got to get people behind you like the marketing aspect like they're probably better marketers than they are actually of programming and making things yeah yeah and, and which is a talent they can probably market talent. that somewhere yeah like that, uh, you know I'm, I'm i'm kind of partly market marketing guy i'm the mouthpiece of this bloody uh, you know this event and so but that takes that's a you know like you said it's a job and a half itself you know it's a it's well a yeah it takes so much time anyone who's good at it like has their videos and they go my video is about creating this and i'm teaching you yeah. stuff and they go all the marketing bits i do and all the putting this in that takes so much you know the other half of my time i'm spent doing this and i get this much time yeah. with my family and so yeah, i don't even you can, I, I want somebody else to come and take this marketing side of things away from me <laughs> so next year we're bringing yeah. other people yeah we're bringing more people in next year to do it because i'm I mean, like it's three years in a row so i'm okay you know, I've been trying to find out who's the right person to come on and start working on this with us. So hopefully next year we'll get about uh, three three or four more people come on board. 
and take plunge over to make it take us to the next step uh which i'm happy for and i think it's gonna be a good thing now so i'm not i think patreon takes about 30 yeah. if i remember right uh, they take they take their bite all right yeah yeah they take a huge proportion so i think so a lot of people a lot of a lot of people who can afford to set up websites where you can you know, pay them and i think it's a cool thing. i mean um if 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 you can build up a following and create a website to send to people too where they can directly pay you and you can send them a code unique to themselves say yes you can download this now you've got this i think that's a cool way to do things as well because i think i'm, I'm interested in that as well i've been thinking about like uh, i know that Ryzen and comics sells their um, you know digital comics like that way as well as physical comics of the subscription base so i've been thinking like well we could somehow do that with comics ourselves a digital version or actual physical version so you could sell you know directly to the customer Oh, yeah, I guess the, the thing with digital version is it doesn't have an outlay, and so it yeah. exists digitally. Like if you shift it to someone as an email or whatever, or a file yeah. on a website, then it doesn't cost you a bean. You don't have to pay yeah. postage. You don't have to mess around. It's having the repeat repeat customers is a thing, and That's I guess it. why Patreon can have high fees, is yeah. or not high fee. Well, I guess they do have high fees. Is because you're getting yeah. free money. If someone was giving me a hundred dollars a month like yeah. and it's free money well thank you guys would i care if to do that patreon takes 30 dollars of it because yeah, i never well, had that money okay. to begin with like <laughs> but so i think that I, the other thing is like you could i don't think it's good but like i mean i can see the reasoning behind it was free money yeah. like it doesn't matter you know like would you get it otherwise yeah. probably not it's like, it's like youtube right i mean it's just a hosting site right now i mean so that's what patreon is but they make their rules and they've tightened their rules every couple months so um so it's gone from being a, a um you know somewhere we could crowdfund yourself to a nice you know make be a creative um independent creator to where they make money off you right but then and i guess they, like all these times nice there's a struggling page. business like yeah. they're, that they're, they're succeeding as businesses like they don't actually care about the creative person they care no. about making the money off yeah. the creative person or the popular person which which like is even trade, they... trade me's fees at the moment yeah. and like the way that operates like it's has gone it, has they changed trade me's fees was well, it's, it's not been great for a while and they don't mm -hmm. send payment they try and encourage you to do all these things and i think they charge you um a fee on the postage as well and things like that yeah. so they, really? they've gone like it's not like the old days i mean in theory it used to operate yeah. like more or less for free and it can do that to a certain measure and it still has ads yeah. but it's not a high business return model right so and now now you're got, like they're, you post, they're creating yeah. money they're when a money post, making machine that is true but i mean like yeah you're right because in the old days when we first started right it so was hardly anything was, and then they started for 700 million dollars to Aussie, mm. was it? Because someone saw that there was a lot of money to be made. Yeah. But the the true thing that would be good in any of these aspects where you look at something like that and go, that's you know, for the people who are trying to do selling stuff, that's not great. Yeah. Is what I'd like to do, and I don't know if anyone ever watches this and wants to help out. Like I'd love to make a collector's trade me we've got the people together we've got the people who would be the customers <laughs> like mm. build a framework and make like fairer rules make like smaller overheads and things and put in mm. the things that are missing the, um, from the other one i would love yeah. to do that i'd put some money into that in time um that's something well, like someone to build a code for it right yeah i remember i remember coming up of that something similar to that way back in 2010 when i was trying to pick put together comic trade website which was comic trade.co.nz <laughs> which doesn't it hasn't existed for years right and so i spent about 44k on it and i was supposed to only spend like about 1800 and just kept going bigger and bigger i got duped basically i'd say you know because i was bringing well, I think... in but then again i look when i look at it it had to come into merchandise a merchant banking elements to it uh and all the other things had to come in now it's like okay well, no, think, I wasn't but, like, 
I just but like understand. you say, you've got a network of creative people who are learning and working in these areas. Like you, we find the right people, you totally can put it together. I mean, coming up with the system, the layout, the tools, the way it sorts, the way it presents, mm -hmm. are things we can do. We can think of ways that, oh, well, trade me sucks because it's only got three sections of different comics and there's hundreds right. because they don't really care about that. They look at their cars right. and you've got your Nissans and ports, you know. Right. Like how can you sort and make that more streamlined for people who are looking for a particular comic how can you present that right. better and so normal people can do that and design people can do that um, design right. students could do that people who are interested in the field in all the different yep. collecting fields well uh, the cool thing is like I said there are people in our community that can do that the question the thing is that people we're ideas people right me and you because we're, mm -hmm. we're in the like a, in this business of marketing and ideas and of you know we we don't kind of have the skill base for that and so often we we're thinking about how to what's needed and what's mostly and how no what is needed and how to do it but with but we don't know who to do it with or who's available to well, do got, it. Well, yeah, but you just got, got to put an idea out there and share it. I mean, it doesn't really matter if we did it, but potentially it could be a successful idea, and it would be really cool for the collector's community if there was a better space for that. It would be cooler to sell. It would be cooler to buy. It would be cooler to experience. And potentially, as modeled by Trade Me and other things, if you can take the clients off there and it's profiting plenty, then mm -hmm. there's every reason why that would be a profitable concept too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think you got to look at like how um, how trade me like how they are. Well, it's basically just a website, isn't it? At the end of the day, no. Uh, yeah, but there's engines like eBay and Trade Me are similar. Like there's yeah. engines that make a basic thing. The the trick would be to make one that's tailored to be specialized to your niche interest, and right. that's focusing less on the money and going, okay, let's just make a new product that competes on every level, and go, hey, let's just focus on something we're passionate about. Let's get other people who are passionate about the different areas to tell yeah. us how that would look really cool for them. What kind of thing, like mm -hmm. little focuses on the defects on a comic, you know and little in shot so when you have a defect you mark it on yeah. and you log a photo and then you can get to it and see it really easily and clearly and have yeah. different standards like that um so different specialists in those interest groups would give you that ability well, I mean, to make a cool kind of system I mean, for mark for doing I'm it for sure, running it i'm sure there is people in the nzcc group right that mm -hmm. have that um, well, there are people in, in both of our social circles in the, right. you know, and what any biz, successful business does is it leverages at the talents of its teams, the, the, the right. best skills, it leverages what it has available for it. What entrepreneurs do is they legit, they um, do the same thing with their relationships. And yep. so they, they get the most out of people, they use it, they leverage it. And it's really just doing that and getting the wheels turning on stuff. Mm. Um, so when we talk about things like Patreon, there's surely ways of doing it better or differently, right. you know, and taking away one little really negative thing is a really clear selling point that makes you better than them. And if you can right. provide the rest, then you, you you potentially have that client base and that revenue from the well, other one. I was like talking about that. I was thinking about uh, uh, Kickstarter today, right? Mm -hmm. Kickstarter is just just about thirty percent as well, right? So I'm I'm thinking like, could I basically directly reach out to the customer and say, listen, right? Can I sell you my product without you, without having to go through Kickstarter? And have you come to me and say, we'll fund, we'll pledge this much money to you, and you know. And when, when you when we when you when we reached our pledge, would you then then you know pay out and we'll send it back? Now the trust element is that you know we're basically out here you know people are expecting people to trust us. Whereas Patreon, I'm like somewhere like Patreon and Kickstarter already have um, security elements built in where you can't basically rip your people off. But I am well aware on patreon that people yeah. have ripped people off and 
hundreds well, of guess thousands of dollars. Patreon is about supporting the individual and in their creative process. So it's like right. back in the days when people had a house artist that they funded and gave like money to go spend in the shops and stuff and they did sculptures in the garage. And so I mean like to be fair, like I don't feel like a Patreon people person could rip someone off. I mean you're probably just naive oh, if no, the artist you, yeah, if you I, bought I mean, into I, the artist, I but I mean, the, the fact is, is Patreon... ...who's ripped $80,000 off people saying they're going to deliver but a game. Patronage is, 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 is like generously giving to someone to like yeah, fund their lifestyle. Right. And so you're not actually buying a product. You're not going, I'm doing, I'm in business with you. You own me. You're like you're, you're kind of, um, you're as, you're the patron, you're the patron. <laughs> and, right. and so that's really the thing. It's really in your hands if you're the, giving them uh, the money. There is that other uh, element to it where we spec delivery for the patron that patronage that I'm giving you. But so then if, you're, if you're not going to provide that, you know, if my my thing is that every month you're going to deliver a new image, right? So I'm going to support you because you said you're going to deliver a new image. So I'm specking that new image by this time. Uh, how okay, much I'm are gonna, you? How much are you paying for that new image yourself as an individual? Depends on what they put on the price on there, right? How, how much? How much are you paying averagely? I haven't. I'm, I think you might was, do a dollar. Uh, you might do three dollars. You might do five dollars. Yeah, but it's different levels, right? So if you get a this um, this thing or that thing or that thing, so if if you're going at a dollar, then you're going to get a digital image. If you're going at about ten dollars, you might get a physical copy of that image, or if you're going to uh, you know say like ten dollars or something, you get a framed image, you, right? You might get or a dollar. nude. Or, or you might get a new, right? Whatever. So it all depends, all right? So it's a very, like they do, like they, these are all the different. But I, I thought okay. Patreon isn't so much about selling stuff, though. It's about encouraging someone to go on a creative journey, isn't it? It is both. More or less. I think it's gotten to a point where you, your patronage is now to a point, and, and because people are putting money to it, there's expectations there that you deliver on that. In, now, a, in a way, don't you think that maybe with the Patreon, like they shouldn't, because I'm pretty sure it shows the amount of funding that that individual's got, right? They probably yeah. shouldn't show it. Because like if I, I was like giving someone back. $5 and I, I liked who they were yeah, and I thought I'm they did back. good work, yeah. like they did cool music or they did an image I liked and I thought that they're living a cool lifestyle and they want to really focus on art, and I gave them $5, if it didn't yeah. show that they were making $1,000 a month, I wouldn't give a fuck. Well, uh, sorry, but the, I wouldn't yeah, care. Some people hide it. Right, well, some they should. I, I would, why, yeah, why well, care? Thing. So, but if you've got 159 people who's a patron, and if they, you know, and and you've got tiers of like up to hundred dollars from dollar but to can't you stop at any time? Of course, you can, but the thing there is there's expectation that someone's lying to you all along the way to say they're going to deliver. So, you're halfway through a game delivery, right? And uh, and two years ago, you were saying you got, you're going to be releasing something. So people that are going to like them, might have continue though. because this guy is going to be, or this person, or this female male is going to be delivering the game. But is is Patreon don't... just like Kickstarter now? Because yeah. Kickstarter, you're expecting a product. You're you're helping yeah. them create yeah. something. You're helping them develop something. Right. You're expecting. You're paying for the box set to turn up once it's produced and published. Right. And generally, you get it. I I felt and that they, Patreon was a, a different. Yeah kind of take i mean yeah they might update a picture or give you access to their portfolio gallery if you put this or that but in fairness i i think i i, I believe it started out as an individual kind of just supporting someone where they're right. a talented right. person and they don't have access to all the resources that some other people do that aren't so talented well the thing is like say if you uh, because i'm games right so say uh, game releases uh come out on a certain day uh, after the beta test is done so they go, come out on the day um the patrons at that level get that on that day on that you know, say like 20 bucks will get on the day of the release mm -hmm. a week later those will um, I'll say two three days later will be the ones on ten dollars or a week later those on five dollars okay right? so you um you get like uh you get um invites to uh, like voice chats and all that stuff discussions uh you'll get you know such and such there's so many different elements to it because you're paying so much money towards the patronage right mm, mm. so if you've got a guy who's paying you like 100 bucks a week 
and you don't deliver um, a month and you don't deliver when you say you're going to deliver, he's going to get a bit upset unless could you, you just have, kick him out. No, no, you have, you chat with him and you keep him saying, Hey, look, it is coming. We're just going through checking all this. But, that, stuff but that's kind now, of the point. But, I mean, if people can quit at any time or stop, like in a lot of ways, like if that. I was to support someone, it would be someone that I really respected. So yeah. say, not that this happened, but say Todd McFarlane was in the gutter, but he was a fantastic artist. He's yeah. lost all his money. He's blown it all. And he yeah. wants a bit of support to still make Spawn. And I was like, well, Todd, I of love your videos. Yeah. I love what because, you do. Yeah, but of course I'd, be you paying, I'd be yeah. paying for his history, like what he's done previously. Right. And I wouldn't care so much about his his future. Like, because he'd be like, well, I'm, yeah. I've got no money at the moment. I need an income. Could you guys help me out? Yeah. Sure. And I, I probably support element, him for right? that. There is that element. But what if Todd is hiding his money away? Yeah, but then and he's pretending uh, but, to be something. But you and can he's decide lying to you. But because I mean, if you, you don't, don't know, if you don't know that, if you don't no, no. know that, then doesn't exactly. matter. So if you don't know the person's situation, and they just keep saying, 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 and you go, well, you've been saying the same thing for about a year, mate. All right? But then you, you start. If you suspect, think that, suspect. then you could just stop, couldn't you? That's what you expect. But I think the um, at, at that point, people are just like, eh. Hopefully he does it. Hopefully he doesn't. And if we need a we need a certain thing, and there are people who basically pull out. And I've seen that, like I've had people go, okay, I've, I've read a, a, a entire freaking, you know, a letter of step-by-step -step things that which, which one, uh, one, it's almost like a grift that this, you know, developer has done halfway into the game and just done nothing for two years. And they say, this is what he keeps saying. And you go, well, it doesn't make sense now because you said, well, oh, you're going to do it there. Now I'm doing this and that. Oh, he's going to the new game. It's like, finish your old game first but you know, sometimes a, a little bit like you're a creative person like I as a creative that. person i could respect that like i wanted to yeah. make a a space game that's a sci-fi like this i made this concept art i made the first level i made this i love it people like the storyline mm -hmm. i'm making it making it making it it's got too hard for me or i've lost interest because it's not gone interesting it's gone boring right. and it's not quite what i picture really as a creative person well. i would yeah. go I'm I'm making a, a different game now. I, I'm right. still the same creative so, person. I'm getting more out of me because I actually believe in my new product and right. or I'm excited to learn it. And right. it, you know, like it, it's probably more important to be excited about what you're doing if you're trying to create that something than there, there, if you, there, there if it became really well. stale. I could yeah. I could totally understand. I mean, they should probably explain it, and they probably do. But as a creative person, like yeah. I'm just trying to make games for my get get go. I've got this good idea. That good idea didn't work, but I still really want to make games. I'm making a tank game now. Fine, like all good, you know, like that, that's understandable. And people have done that. So the, the, what happens is the game goes on hold. The ones that they've, they've stopped working on, it goes on yep. hold, and they go into the next one. So the problem then starts that nobody wants an unfinished series, right? Nobody ever wants that unfair series. Yeah, but I think you're now putting we, too much into the product. Don't don't you think like if you listen to yourself, like you're you're focusing on a product rather than someone's yeah. creative journey. And I mean yes yeah. there's charlatans, well, I mean, yes there's bad people, there are people who take yeah. advantage of people. But I mean you have a choice to stop any time. But like if you take it as a capacity of I'm encouraging someone to be creative, mm. I'm trying to buy them a day off work so they can focus well, on making will, games. Right? Yeah. And that, you, that's cool. The goodwill element of that. But the creative because aspect, I mean is is tangible and like at times it changes you know like yeah. sometimes you just you lose your love for something and you loved it for 10 years and like i've been trying really hard to make it work yeah. stopping is probably the best thing to do and like if you can stay on the horse and make something different great right and you it's can stop like, funding them uh, it's like george rr R. martin now we'll never get a last book because he's he's enjoying all the fame and stuff whatever because of course he deserves all that but then of <laughs> course you know yeah but it, but there is that element and i understand that as a creative person i mean i've you know i rewrite stuff all the time over and over again it's how many half finished week. things have you got you'd have to, um, i've got tons i but they don't well, go well, out you not barely they don't started go to people. things yeah no, no, no but they're, they're not going but like when yeah. you're a patreon when you're a creative person you're letting them in your creative space right. like i mean you could understand you know, that you've got 10 products in your cupboard and you're focusing on one but you've changed your mind and you want to focus on another mm -hmm. i get that yeah, I mean, then there is, but there's there's expectation that you should finish the first product because, okay, you're gonna move on to the next one because then, but what that but does, sure. is, 
But you know how hard it is to create something. Oh, yeah. You you know how hard it is to see something through and, right. and see it's the end just because right. you want to. And then you put it out, you, you try and build it up. You're excited about it. Getting yeah. that actually done to a level where it's like, wow, I did it fully is actually really, really hard. I think the, um, the, um, when it comes to game development is because if, if you're getting, like if, if people have put so much into it, and you've delivered on so much, there's expectation that you should deliver or get more people to work with you on it. But because it seems like about games. you just keep on focusing on the product though, right? Yeah. Like if I was watching a game developer and he yeah. was making a game that was a real-time strategy and he was using Unity and he was making the sprites and things, okay, I kind of understand how to do that on a sprite and Photoshop is concepting, is putting it in there, he's doing the code He's figuring it out. He doesn't know how to do yep. it very good. He's trying to develop his skills. Yep. He's ambitious. Yep. When he's programming new things and exciting things and sharing it with me, if, if that was yep. the case, I'd get more value out of learning. How did he do that? That was really cool. Like that guy went on a real challenging it's thing. He studied there. it. Learning the skills yep. and watching someone develop their talent. And same thing with art. Is you know, like as you could be learning Agua, he drew that from pencil art and he brought it through to this beautiful painted finish. That journey in between, if that's shared, is probably more valuable but, but than the product. Is, but the thing there is now that he's about to finish it, he just stops or she stops, right? So, either or, and so then there's a distrust whether with the next thing he or he or she does finishes or not either and that's that's the element you don't want to create if you're a developer in this thing and i'm even when when i'm thinking like if if somebody's gonna if i'm gonna work with somebody and somebody decides well i'm gonna run off well halfway through go oh i'm thinking about doing another thing it's like cool cool are you gonna finish this one though because if that, you're not i'm walking away right now that's creative people for you yeah I, i'm there i i, I have that mind because I'm, you know I, i'm with that. you get sidetracked you get excited yeah. about different things at times yes yeah. but the thing is then then i'm not going to be i'm not going to be there working along that person side person because then, I, like, do, well, I just find that yeah. you know like there's things where you're selling a product and you're going this is what i'm making i'm going to provide this to you at the end of it fair enough yeah. i get you can be upset by that but i just think that people aren't always presenting that and then mm -hmm. you focus on oh you're doing this and so i'm going to get this product but yeah. that's not really what you're paying for in some of those scenarios. You're helping well, they, them yeah, on their journey. Developers who actually are so good because they've been able to uh, understand and get other people to work with them. You know, they've gotten to a point where people have said, we really like what you're doing. Here's more money. And you need to get more people involved to get this finished. And yeah, so but that's, 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 that's a money. business development then. So again, you've got a creative mm -hmm. person. They've built a big project. They've put a lot of years into it. They're getting stressed, right. but they're proud of what they've done. And they yeah. get to a level where they should invest in other resources. They should outlay some of it. They've put, yeah. been a passion project. They're not business people. They've got X amount of oh, income. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that's probably not going to be their first course of action. That wasn't their goal. Maybe they wanted to be a solo developer. And maybe it's, right. you know, they do realistically need to change, but like they're not necessarily going to get them themselves. I mean, it's very pragmatic business sense where it's like, okay, well, let's see if we can get in some more money. I'm going to start working with Joe Bob and right. he's going to do half the work. But, you know, like I don't imagine that probably comes up like organically when they're in that position all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's getting to a point where even with me, I'm like, you know, I'm doing a lot, of, a lot of the work on this workload, so I think it's going to move away from being a volunteer basis to actually, I need some funds coming my way. I think because at the moment, I've learned all I need to learn from it, um, but I want to see this game completed, right? Because I don't want this, mm -hmm. um, you know, even at that, so I'm in that mindset where, okay, I also want to see this game completed, even though I'm working on it on a volunteer basis. So you know, I got to weigh up what my options are. But I mean, like, the cool thing is that now I know that nobody will ever know which game I worked on, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm working under a pseudonym. Nobody will ever know it was me. But they probably but, tell us. But but developers in the, in, the, in the gaming industry or in the independent circuit know who I am and they know my skill level and so on. So I'll be able to, by the time this game finishes, I'll be able to say, 
yeah, I've already made a name for myself by the time this game finishes. Another feather in the Would, cap. 